This video was created for the Urban Riparian and Stream Restoration Program by Extension and Research Specialists with Texas A&M AgriLife and the Texas Water Resources Institute. Funding for this video was provided through a Clean Water Act Section 319H non-point source grant from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. It is intended to help water professionals and members of the public interested in stream restoration better understand how to conduct a pebble count of a creek or stream. The composition of a stream bed substrate tells you something about the stream's character. For example, steep mountain streams with beds of boulders and cobbles act differently than relatively flat streams with beds of sand or silt. This difference can be documented by describing the bed material. This documentation process is called a pebble count. A pebble count can help analyze and classify a stream. With a pebble count, we are wanting to gather enough samples to plot the information and find the D50 value. This value is the average size of your stream bed substrate. Figuring out this value helps you determine if a restoration project is needed and how big a job and how expensive it might be. To conduct a pebble count, you will need a team of at least two people, a sample collector and a note taker, a millimeter ruler to measure your substrate, a long measuring tape to measure how wide your stream is, and recording forms, which can be found online at twri.tamu.edu backslash urban dash resources. Since the sample collector will be in the stream and reaching down to pick up substrate that is deeper than the length of a sample collector's arm, they will be getting wet. You will need to bring the appropriate gear, such as waterproof boots, properly sized waders, or even a wetsuit, depending on the depth of your stream. Keep in mind, you will be outside at your site for several hours. Depending on the time of year and your location, this can mean extreme temperatures, biting pests, venomous snakes, sun exposure, and other potential hazards. Be prepared to stay safe at your location. Also be aware that aquatic creatures may be living on or under large substrate items. While most creatures encountered during a pebble count are harmless, they may be startling to the sample collector. If your stream is too deep for the sample collector to safely reach down to collect substrate with their hands, you may also need a shovel or other tool to collect substrate. Be careful whenever you are in or getting into or out of a stream. It is common for sample collectors to slip and fall while doing a pebble count. Always keep safety in your mind when doing a pebble count analysis. When you get to your stream site, the first thing you want to think about is where you plan to do your pebble count. Ideally, you want to conduct your pebble count at the stream's riffle. The riffle is a section of the stream where there'll be the greatest level of substrate diversity and usually, but not always, has the fastest, shallowest water. Other sections of a stream include runs and pools. Pools are characterized by deep areas and slow moving water, while runs are the smooth, unbroken sections connecting riffles and pools. After you select your site, the next step is to take your tape measure perpendicular across the stream. Ideally, you want to measure from the top of the bank on the one side to the top of the bank on the other side if that's possible, but you at least want to make sure that you're covering the bank full distance, bank full to bank full. Very generally, bankful is the area that floods every one to two years, but identifying it can be difficult. To get it right, it helps to look around at several different points along the stream. It's also good to have prior knowledge of your site or go out with someone who does. Generally, a pebble count should include 100 samples. Once you have your stream width measured, you need to divide that width by 100 to get your sampling interval. Just as an example, let's say your stream is 40 feet wide. That is 480 inches. To take 100 samples, that makes the sampling interval 4.8 inches. A big part of doing a pebble count is random sampling. Your goal is to get a representative look at the makeup of the stream bed. To do this, the sample collector can't show any kind of bias when picking up samples. 
At each interval, starting with the top of bank, the sample collector must turn their head away from the stream and reach down. They are to pick up the first substrate item their hand touches on the stream bed to ensure randomness. If your stream is too deep for your sample collector to safely and successfully reach down to collect a sample properly, the sample collector will need to get creative on collecting samples. Using a tool such as a shovel or even another sample collector can help collect samples safely. If using a shovel or other tool to gather stream bed substrate, the sample collector needs to turn their head away and take a sample from the substrate in the shovel or other tool. If the sample collector's hand touches sand or silt, that's fine. They should tell the note taker and move on. If the sample collector's hand connects with a bigger material, such as gravel type material, a pebble, a cobble, or even a larger item, that item must be measured. When measuring substrate, there are three axes to look for. The longer axis would be the length, the intermediate axis would be the width, and the shortest axis would be the thickness. The sample collector needs to measure the intermediate axis with the millimeter ruler and report the measurements to the note taker. Measurements need to be taken in millimeters to better use the class size chart provided on twri.tamu.edu slash urban dash resources. Take samples at every interval across the width of your stream. The note taker will help keep the sample collector on track and ensure the total number of samples needed is collected. After you've collected samples at every interval all the way across your stream, you can then go to your next site. Or if you're just taking that one pebble count, then you are done. Once you are done, you can take your results back and plot the data based on size, class, and frequency and really develop a graph of the D50 value. The D50 value is the particle size that 50% of the samples are equal to or smaller than. It is effectively the average size of your stream bed substrate. The D50 value from your pebble count is part of the whole informational picture that can help classify a stream. That classification can help guide a restoration project. For more information on conducting pebble count analysis or help with further stream classification, please visit twri.tamu.edu slash urban dash resources. Funding for this video was provided through a Clean Water Act Section 319H non-point source grant from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and U.S. Environmental Protection Agency.